This used to be the Prescott Bytown Railway back in the 1800s. I'm on an adventure with Ottawa artist Andrew King. When he's not painting, he's searching for long forgotten pieces of our history, like this site near Manitic. This would have been the uh, hidden whiskey still uh, used to make pokey moonshine during the Prohibition. Where did you get an interest in this? Like what first piqued your interest? How can you not be interested in illegal booze production and smuggling during Prohibition right here in Manitic? <laughs> he writes and tweets about each find, hoping he'll ignite our interest too. I think it's a cool piece of our local history. Unfortunately, not appreciated by anyone because we're in the middle of the woods, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So how does that passion for lost history mesh with his art? I asked Andrew King that during a conversation at his studio in Westboro that he shares with his partner and fellow artist, Alison Fowler. You're a graphic artist, an industrial designer, you're a historian, an artist. Does it depend on the day, <laughs> what you are? I think it depends on my mood. Um, I love drawing and painting and it's a, a blessed that I can make a living at it, but as with any job uh you want to do something else that challenges your brain and hey i'm going to take the day off and i'm going to go on an adventure and just see what we can find did you like history when you were in school no not at all <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just told in such a boring and dry way if all it would take would be for the history teachers of today is to take the kids on a little field trip and explain, see this spot? This is where this happened and you walk by it every day. What, that happened here? I had no idea. Like they don't do that. It's always boring textbook stuff, very politically correct and has to cover all aspects. Meanwhile, we've got all this cool stuff right in our neighborhood. Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I grew up outside of Kingston near a place called Bath, Ontario, which is just west of Kingston. And it's pretty remote. I'm not going to say remote. It was out in the woods. Uh, so there wasn't a lot to do. But my dad would come home from work with piles of scrap paper because back in the uh, early 80s, no one recycled. And he thought, well, they're just going to throw out all this Xerox paper. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just draw on the back of them? And that way you're reusing the paper. So I would just sit and draw on the back of Xerox paper and learn to draw that way. What were you drawing? Well, I was big into Star Wars at the time, as most kids of that era probably were. And I would draw spaceships. Um, I was into drawing mazes, like creating a maze, um, drawing cars, uh, yeah, airplanes, you know, typical seven-year-old kid stuff. Obviously you had talent. Did you know it or did people tell you that, hey, Andrew? No. Um, so went to school, took art all through school as the program offers, but it wasn't until I was in a program that I didn't really like that uh, somebody, I think it was Deb Richmond at the Ottawa Citizen, the Ottawa, I was going to Carleton University and I saw an ad in the Citizen saying, we'll pay $50 for a cartoon. And being a broke student, uh, I'm like, 50 bucks? I'm in. <laughs> so submitted some cartoons and they published them. I got 50 bucks and then uh, they said, do you want to do it once a week? So then I started doing it once a week. And then from there, somebody said, you should do cartoon animation. Uh, there's a program at Algonquin, so I looked into that, applied there, went there, learned I could make some money drawing, and that is how I guess where I am today. I think that's what I am first and foremost, is drawing cartoons. It's what I've always done. Just, I translate them into a different medium through paintings. Um, when I do my historical adventures, I'll always do a sketch. It may not be a cartoony style, but it's still using the elements of cartooning, uh, sketching, inking, uh, rendering, and labeling. Your paintings are very distinctive. Like mm -hmm. you know an Andrew King when you see one. That style is difficult to describe. Uh, I call it contemporary landscapes because it's not really traditional landscape painting. 
it's more of a um, kind of a cartoon, uh, very architectural, uh, light and shadow. I call it contemporary landscaping. Take a look, make sure everything is cool over our conversation briefly interrupted by a customer who fell in love with one of Andrew's contemporary landscapes. What is it about his work that you like? I think it's a unique uh, style in terms of the, the architecture and how he, uh, he does the lighting and the painting and all of this. Uh, I think it's unique and it's really nice and clean lines and, you know, we love original art. And so we just decided to, uh, to do it. What is your dream, ultimately? I am very happy being able to paint and pay my bills. But I guess if I took it a step further, I do most of this to survive, but I also do it to fund these adventures. I really enjoy it. As with anyone's hobby, if you enjoy it, it's not a job, and it doesn't matter how long it takes to do it. So the aim of it is just you, you're interested in, and you hope other people, are their interest is peaked? Exactly. Uh, my goal, I guess, is to let people know that uh, people say Ottawa is boring. Ottawa is not boring. There's cool stuff here. We should appreciate the history of this town. And that way we'll, um, I guess, reconsider. Hey, instead of just saying this is a boring town, let's put up this boring condo. Hey, why not make a condo or whatever and then name it after place that, like around an old train roundhouse why not take the old stone ruins of that old roundhouse and build it into the lobby like just appreciate what was here instead of just trying to erase it and it'd be nice to focus 100 percent on these adventures and history things so i guess the dream would be somebody pays me and we go out and on worldwide adventures uncovering hidden things but that's a childhood fantasy, so I doubt it'll happen. But it was also a childhood fantasy to get paid to draw, so anything is possible. Fascinating talking to you, Andrew. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. It was fun.